Okay, Zesh, um, Zesh, we're, you just signed from Wangtong United from after it's burned Bradford City. What's made you leave the, the, the wonderful weather of Bradford, the, you know, winter time in England and head towards Thailand? How, how did the move come about? Yeah, well, I've been fortunate enough to play in England for, for 10 years. You know, I played at six clubs, all the leagues, so you know, it was a really good experience. Then I had an offer, a phone call from a club, from a club in Thailand, in Tom, to come and have a look and speak to them. And uh, to be fair, once I'd been there and had a look at it, you know, it was a no-brainer for me. I was really happy with what I saw, happy with the club, happy with what I've heard about the training, the facilities, the games, and I put pen to paper and I've got no regrets. So you, did, did, did you do any research before you came over or you just sort of, oh, I'll wait till I get there and see what happens when I get there? No, 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 I spoke to my mate who played out here, Richard Langley, he played, yeah. he played out here so he told me a bit about it. <clears throat> I spoke to Brian Robson before I came out, he gave me a really good insight into the, the football, the people, the culture, right. what to expect, so that, that was very helpful. Okay, so you've been here now, what, maybe five or six weeks, yeah. and uh, your first competitive game was on Saturday. A way to see which I was kind of some game to start the season with, isn't it? I mean, maybe in the UK you might start with a couple of like friendlies or a local competition, but a Champions League qualifier first game of the season against a team that are in the middle of their season. Yeah, yeah, yeah don't, well, I don't think there's a major difference in the fitness. Maybe they're more used to the climate over here. You know, it was it was a little bit of a factor for me because I'm used to the cold, wet winter north northern <laughs> England. You know, so it's been a good. Good uh, time to adapt. Six weeks. I think it's going to take a little bit longer to get used to the climate, but you know I've been I've been impressed by the the quality of the football, the standard, and a lot of technically gifted players over here. And maybe I think in the UK and in Europe, maybe don't realise that technically, you know, there's not a million miles apart. Yeah. Um, now with Mike Tong United, you're joining a team that's one of the deepest pockets in Thailand. They've won the title for the last four years. But they're also pretty ruthless. Um, they sat the coach last year, players are coming good. It's going to be a pretty high pressure situation up there. Yeah, well, they're, they're winners, you know, and they want to win every game they play and they want to win the league again. And that was made very clear to me before I signed. And that's good that they've got high expectations. And, you know, hopefully I can come here and do my bit, help them to continue that, that successful run. And, uh, you know, if we can do that, then I'm sure everyone will be happy. Cool. All right. Um, but also, we talked a bit earlier, earlier, you're also the captain of the Pakistan national team and you've got a quite a busy schedule coming up as well in the next few months. Can you see yourself being involved in that as well as your Wangtong efforts and also you've got the um, AFC Cup? Yeah, there's a lot of games coming up and obviously um, we've got the league starting very soon, the, the league cup, the AFC Cup and um, you know, international call up so it's a juggling act at the minute, I've not decided yet whether I'm going to go and play the international game. It's going to depend very much on the club situation. But if the opportunity does come up and it is suitable to both parties, yeah. then you know, something I'll consider. All right, so you, you left Bradford where you had like a whole heap of derbies along the M62. And it's like almost every week you have a local derby. Within the, with, in Thailand, you're going to be having quite a few games you're going to be flying to and from, I imagine. And also you've got the AFC Cup. So it's kind of like a good time to build up the air miles, really, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, it is. I mean, I was counting the other day. I've been fortunate enough to, to visit 20 countries now through football. Right. And it's, you know, it's a very privileged position to be in. And uh, I'm going to be flying to, to more countries to play football and to hopefully win games. You know, you can't beat that. There's nothing to complain about. And it's, if you have to clock up a few air miles, then it's, it's part of the journey, part of the experience. Life is good, huh? Um, so in my time, you got a two year deal, one year deal with a one year option. Yeah. Um, do you, do you see yourself maybe, I mean, I know you just really not in your second tube of toothpaste yet, but do you see yourself settling around in Asia for a bit longer? Or? Yeah, like I said, I've played in England for 10 years, I'm 27 now, I still feel I've got the best years ahead of me as a centre-back, apparently you don't peak to you from 28 to 34 are your best years, so, you know, I've just signed for a long time, fully committed, I want to give it my best for this year and maybe the following year, but then after that, who knows, you know, you've got to be open to all, all options in this game. Right. Well, I'm not looking too far ahead, I'm just focusing on the next game, though. No. Yeah. Alright, enough of the cliches. Um, I was looking through your website just before I came to meet you, and um, I see you, you're quite passionate about anti racism and that. Now, I, I grew up in England in the 1970s and 80s, and there was a lot of 
anti-racism marches and there's a lot of anti-Nazi league concerts and you know we grew up with bands like The Beat and The Specials and The Clash who is a strong multicultural um, linkage and background to those sort of bands so is it still an issue in England? I think like you said from the 70s it's improved a lot you know from when the National Front were a force um, there's a lot of football hooliganism if you like and it put off a lot of ethnics and afro caribbeans from going to the games right. but I think now the FA the PFA kick it out show racing the red card all organisations which I've been working with for the best part of a decade have really tried to raise awareness I think that's the key issue you know, educating the youngsters who are the fans of tomorrow about you know what's right and what's wrong and where the boundaries are. So I don't think it's fully gone. You know, I'll be foolish to think that it's fully gone. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's definitely improved a lot since the seventies. And of course, you you were recently playing in Bradford City, and there's a strong Asian community in Bradford, isn't there? Um, do many of them go to the games? Are many of them involved in the in the youth ranks at Bradford City? There's not many coming through the system at Bradford City, but while I was there, you know, I launched my own foundation, which aims to encourage children from all backgrounds to enter sport and better themselves through football. They started to come to the games. In fact, this Saturday, over 200 of them went to watch Bradford against Wickham, and they won 1-0, so I think they were the lucky charm. <laughs> Predominantly Asian kids, but like I said, it is a mixture of kids. And it, you know, the foundation is one way of tapping into that local community which the club have struggled to do over the years. So I think with a bit of time and patience, the numbers will increase. All right. It's interesting you say the club have struggled to do that. When, you know, you walk up and down, the main street is like Manning and Lane outside the stadium. You'd think that, um, you know, that would be a priority for the club. Yeah, I think they've tried. Well, while I was there, you know, the first Asian captain of the club for 107 years, whatever it is, yeah. um, you know, well, as soon as I came to the club, the club had its first Asian associate director, a couple of Asian sponsors got on board and the fans started to come in, not by the thousands, but at least they started to think about the club and want to get involved. So there was, you know, ground, grounds were being broken in that respect, doors were opening. But obviously now, while I've left, the foundation was still trying to take kids in there. But I think this is going to be a little bit difficult for the club mm. to engage unless they've got more Asian players playing for them. Right. Let's tie everything together. So I started to get the Bradford City, Thailand, and Pakistan. Um, I was looking at uh, on the internet somewhere the other day, and it's saying that um, as a, the Pakistan team have been in Thailand recently, ahead of the Olympic qualifiers, and they've got one young lad who plays for Bradford Park Avenue in their team. Did you know anything about him? No, I don't know. To be honest, I don't. But I'm due to meet them. I'm supposed to meet them this week. But obviously, I'm stuck in Indonesia for yeah. a few extra days. Yeah. I think they're in Thailand to the 20th. So if I get a day or two. You know, I'll go and spend a bit of time with the young lads and yeah. give them a little bit of advice and support wherever I can. All right, cool. Thanks a lot. No problem. Cheers,